And now, back from performing at all those fabulous international hotspots, it's <laughs> Philip Jembry. I only did one international auction. I am the ancient mariner, long back from deep within the sea. Deaf now to the siren song, I loose these demon memories from my soul and once again breathe free. Lovely. Thanksgiving, 3 p.m. Sixth floor walk up at an old tenement building next to the Yuki Funeral Parlor on 7th Street. Black and white TV on, rabbit ears up, sound off. Thanksgiving Day Parade is over. Santa's been safely delivered to Macy's to the delight of children everywhere. Huh. Nothing on but football for the rest of the day. Lulu's passed out drunk and naked in the old clawfoot bathtub. Bo's cored up on her belly, purring and kneading her chest with his paws as if trying to revive her with the power of his love. She's holding on to an empty pint of Svetka. Looks like our planned Thanksgiving dinner ain't gonna happen. I turn off the bathroom light, put on my peacoat and Mets cap and split. Leaping down the narrow spiral staircase two steps at a time, still trying to trick my body into thinking it's three floors instead of six. I hit the sidewalk and head towards Second Avenue, turning up my collar, tipping down my head to block the damp wind. I stop at Big Bar, but it's closed for the holiday. Circle back toward first to Blue and Gold. It's closed too. I walk up the tile bar in the corner. Damn, closed. I cross first, pick up a pack of rolling papers at the bodega, and I check the international bar next door. A closed sign in the window. It's gray, windy, desolate, no traffic, no people. Cold, sad, and frustrated, heading south on First Avenue. I'm thinking I'm probably going to end up at McDonald's with a freaking Happy Meal and nothing to drink. Just about to go in Mickey D's when I notice the lights on in the window of the coal yard bar next door. It's open, fuck yeah. I step in to find the joint full of locals who, like me, are looking for some solace and sanctuary on a lonely holiday. I grab the only remaining seat on the far curve of the horseshoe bar, hang my coat on the back of the stool, and settle in for a look around. Spotting Blondie, Boho, Gator, Roadrunner, Snake, and the usual coyotes from the local bars here. Crossing the bar, the walls lined with tables filled with foil bacon trays of turkey, mashed potatoes, stuffing, string beans, and cranberry sauce. There are stacks of paper plates, napkins, and plastic utensils. Folks are helping themselves to this holiday feast offered free to anyone who wanders in. We're breaking bread with family today, defined for us by circumstance or misfortune, but family we are. We're all the social misfits and outcasts who've chosen dive bars as our comfort zone. From across the bar, my writer friend Blondie waves and smiles a big hello as I'm making my way to the food table. I offer a mechanical nod and my best fake smile. I fill a plate high with stuffing, douse it with gravy, and return to my stool to wash it down with a cc and soda. An attractive young lady sashays up and asks in a thick Liverpool accent if I'd mind chatting with her for a bit. I'm feeling pretty low and don't even want to talk to my bar buds. I don't sense any kind of hitting on me vibe, so I ask her what's up with her. She says she's from Ibiza, freelances for Vogue magazine Europe doing lifestyle stories and is here to do a story on dive bars. <laughs> what the fuck, is she for real? <laughs> Tells me my tats are cool and thinks I've been around a lot and I might be an interesting interview. I reluctantly agree, but only if she'll spring for a drink. She does, I order a double makers instead of my usual cheap shit. She asks a bunch of rudely inquisitive, insulting and demeaning questions about me and the type of people who hang out in dive bars. <laughs> I'm embarrassed and pissed off, so I reply with subtly sarcastic answers that go right over her empty head. I think they'll probably satisfy the preconceived notions of her faux aristocrat readers who think they know who we are and what we do down here. It's total bullshit. She eats it up because it's what she wants to hear. I'm done and she moves on after I hit her up for another double makers. Friend of the bartender asked what's up with that chick. 
I tell her the bogus answers I gave to her asshole question, and she laughs, saying, just another Euro trash vampire looking to taste some wild coyote blood down here. She high fives me, pours another double makers on the house. I finish my stuffing with a CC and soda for the road, fill up a big take home plate of cold turkey scraps and spuds, sloshed with lots of thick cold gravy. I know Lulu's gonna be hungry when she wakes up. I leave with a quick nod to my friends. Blondie follows me out. Hey, Lucky, you're acting like a real shit. What the fuck's going on with you? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just in a dark holiday hole right now. You know, I'll be all right. See you around. Is Lulu up for meds again? Uh -huh. I shake my head, yeah. Wow, sorry, man. She kisses me on the cheek and she's gone. I'm feeling a little woozy. Just go through the motions, get out of here. Lift the collar, pull down the brim, hands in the pockets, slow, easy steps, and I'm going with the wind. Lulu's up in the bathroom brushing her teeth when I finally get back. I lean in and notice a mean looking black and blue in her hip from falling in the bathtub, I guess. I don't see any blood or open wounds, so I guess we're okay. Bo's sitting up in the toilet tank watching Lulu brush. I roll a doobie, smoking the kitchen table laughing as she wolfs down the cold take home and tosses turkey scraps down to Bo, who pounces on him with delight. Nodding her head repeatedly in satisfaction, she looks up at me and smiles. Buzzed from the barn, pretty stoned. I'm mesmerized by her naked body. She looks beautiful, even under that stark bare kitchen bulb. I'm thinking I just might get lucky tonight if she don't start drinking again too soon. I know, we don't look like your Norman Rockwell Thanksgiving family portrait, but we're all we got, and that's going to have to do. Thank you.